Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Washington State is full of unique sights. The beauty of Puget Sound, Pike Place Market and its flying fish, the Seattle Space Needle, and more. Just down the road a ways, you might find another memorable site. Here, all signs indicate John McCoy has put together a first-class collection of evergreen tractors. Okay. Yes, sir, I got a 620 orchard. I've, have, I've got two of them. One's full skirted. It's uh, all fuel. They made 202 of them. This is a John Deere 1937 AOS. A, O for orchard, S for the uh, streamline. Uh, they made 815, I believe. These are just the tractors John's got at home. On this day, most of his collection is out at the local tractor show. This tractor here is a 2010, 1962. My father bought this brand new in Michigan. This John Deere tractor is a 4520. I'll be a 1966. Sit back, because this could take all afternoon. John's collected the 20 series tractors from the 320 on up. This one here is a 720 standard. They made 345 liquid propane. Now this is my 820. It's about 64 horsepower. This came out of Montana. And even though they're not green, he's even made room for a pair of beefy 160 horse international 4100s. I bought them just because uh, I like them, uh, I like tractors, and I don't mind a, a little bit of change in colors. Uh, I've got 38 tractors all together right now. <laughs> and maybe 39, I got one I'm dealing on right now. Never, never enough. That's why we go on little road trips. That's why we are in the back 40 looking for tractors. There's always another one that he could add to his collection. Rhonda knows John's got every sign of a very common affliction. Tractor fever. And the symptoms are easy to see. Green, we get a lot of green, shirts, clothes, a lot of the John Deere colors. Now with more than three dozen tractors, you might think John would have a tough time picking a favorite. Fact is, the one you see him driving right here has had a hold on John since he first laid eyes on it when he was just a teenager. Yeah, this might have a little bit of a grip on me. I enjoy getting it out. Uh, like I say, it's an eye catcher. This one here is a 420 V, or vegetable. It's a rare tractor. It uh, measures 28 inches from the bottom of the axle to the ground, where a high crop is 34 inches from the bottom of the axle to the ground. This tractor came from Coloma, Michigan. Uh, up by Benton Harbor, St. Joe, southwestern Michigan. My father bought it brand new in 1958. It's the slant. By the steering wheel, you can see it's a slant. That slanted steering wheel is one of the distinguishing marks that proves this is a 1958 420V, one of only 32 ever built. With a vertical two-cylinder engine, this tractor was also known as a special or a semi-high crop. This one came with the cultivators. It's all original. This is the way my father bought it. So one row cultivator and tractor with the side dressers on it. Dry fertilizer, we generally put nitrogen in for corn to give it a boost, and then irrigate it. That was always precise done. Having us cultivate the tomatoes or the cucumbers. And we said, well, we want to go to the beach. And dad would say, when you get this field done, you can go. Well, dad was smart enough that we could have had two of these tractors out there cultivating for 14 hours, and we still wouldn't have been done. Yeah, John remembers long hours cultivating his dad's corn and tomatoes with this now very rare tractor, including one early morning that came way too soon after a late night for a teenager. About 7 o'clock that next morning, we were out cultivating the tomatoes. And 10 o'clock, Dad comes out and looks, and about every 10th tomato plant was wilting. And he comes up and looks at me, and he says, you didn't get much sleep, did you, son? I said, no, I didn't. He says, well, he said, you better get off this tractor and get in the house and get some sleep because he says, you're killing a third of my field out there. <laughs> and what we were doing is zigzagging down the rows with this tractor and the sweeps were hitting the roots of the tomato plant. <laughs> and uh, 
He was right. <laughs> the Model 4555 Cultivator and all the attachments are also hard to find today. And along with the tractor, stand as a tribute to the care John's dad took in maintaining his farm equipment. Again, everything's original. The sheet metal, besides being painted. Uh, water cap's original. Fuel, air, oil, headlights. Probably have been changed once, the, the, the lights. It came this way with one weight. I believe this is about a 90-pound weight on here. And that was for probably when we hooked the plows to it. This tractor did come with this orchard muffler. Uh, people ask questions, what's, what's an orchard muffler doing on a high crop? That's the way it came. Again, Dad didn't order it this way. That tractor was sitting out on the lot, and he liked it, so he bought it. Back in 1958, for the 420 V and all the implements, John figures his dad paid at most $2,800. It's worth a ton more today. But rest assured, this real McCoy of a tractor will stay a prized family heirloom for a long time to come. Right now, I would probably keep this one as my last tractor if I only had to slim down only one tractor, I'd keep, I'd keep Dad's tractor. So yes, he'd be mighty proud that uh, this tractor has done as much as it has, and now sort of in its retirement stage, it's being showed and show and tell.